All right, guys, uh, the dean came to me and asked us to discuss uh, students who on their applications um, are out and wanted our opinion on how the school should go about um, identifying them and talking to them um, about their admissions process. I got actually Facebook invites and phone calls from LGBT students that were trying to say, come on, it's not a big deal. We're all gonna, we're all gonna accept you and you don't need to come and join our club. You know, we have faculty members who are out and who are open and who are willing to guide them in the process. And also to let them know about the student organizations that we have that are specifically geared toward LBGT students. When I applied and I got notice of the community, that was one of the first things that would point out to me is that we have a Lambda organization somewhere you can join. And I don't necessarily want to be a political activist in the LGBT community, but still LGBT issues are issues that affect me on a daily basis and they're issues that I have to, that I do worry about. So I mean, it was nice, it's nice to have an organization to, to be able to discuss those issues. From the first month that I started law school, I. Uh, was paired with a mentor through our organization and so I already had an upper class student that um, could kind of give me the lay of the land and uh, there were social events so I got to meet other law school students. When I entered law school I was the only out person in my class but I don't think that's the case at all today. Pretty much at any law school in the country that you enter, there are gonna be dozens of openly LGBT students. Um, they're gonna be involved with the student group. They're gonna make sure sexual orientation and gender identity um, law issues are discussed in the classrooms and pro programs outside the classroom. And it's gonna be uh, generally a supportive environment. Gay and lesbian student today can find um, a gay and lesbian professor probably to do a paper with or can attend a conference like Lavender Law or can seriously think about planning a career in an organization that is open to gays and lesbians. And so should it be surprising that the criminal departures from a society that enculturates aggressiveness as the norm, that the departures from that are gonna look like this. When the norm is aggression, the departures on the extreme side, on the one side of that at least, are gonna produce this. That's what we've done. It's understood that the Land Law Caucus and the students who are part of it are part of the community and it wouldn't be thought of any other way. It's just become ingrained into the culture of the place in a way that I don't think ever would have happened if the Land Law Caucus hadn't existed and the students hadn't kept up with just ingraining themselves into the, into the institution. The university itself has made the coming out process in a professional manner much easier not only with the role models at the university that are out and gay and doing incredibly well professionally, but also the opportunities that they give to their students. Our Lambda Law Group on campus is very involved and very active. I wish I was more involved with it. I think being an evening student, especially when everyone goes through their 1L bonding experience, I missed out on that. That being said, these are my peers and they are going to be my peers when I go into the workforce, and it is important to be part of that community. It was a great experience to be a part of my LGBT group because it was a group of people that were like-minded and also very diverse. And I was able to have a lot of really great relationships grow out of that. Me and my friends have this joke that whenever we're in law school classes, each one of us is a spokes gay because we're there's one of us in every class who's willing to make those statements. Um, and bring up issues that other people aren't willing to talk about. But I, do feel it's I knew I wanted to be involved in Lambda. I never really thought that um, I would sort of be the person that would try to take on a leadership role. I mostly just wanted to use it for, uh, you know, social reasons, meeting people and that sort of thing. Um, and that's uh, the function that it has served for me. It's a diverse school, but yes. within the LGBT community no. at this school. It's not diverse. You think so? There aren't very many people of color that are involved in the group. Um, and you know, it's, it's a situation mirrored um, in many gay organizations, nationally, locally, um, everywhere. Uh, so um, that is difficult. The first year when you're a 1L, I would say you don't have time to do anything. <laughs> uh, I went to some programs, but I didn't really do anything in the LGBT community here at the law school. Uh, but going into my second year, I'm now almost done with my second year, I became the president of the Lambda Law Society here at, here at school, uh, which was a great opportunity. We've done amazing things. We've done a lot of work on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And having been a veteran, I get a lot of questions and in interviews. So being able to work on those issues has been really important to me here at law school.
I've been selected to have leadership positions not only on the La Raza student organization, but also on Outlaws board. And I'm able to help with admissions and reach out to LGBT students. And so it's really rewarding to be able to serve both sides of my identity. At my school, we have a group called the Queer Caucus, which encompasses a whole bunch of different sorts of identities. We can use the term queer and at least hope that there is inclusion of people who are different. The LGBT students feel like they can have some real influence on the direction of our movement, and uh, the time is now. So this is a time to come to law school, get to participate in these issues, get to litigate them as a lawyer, and hopefully one day get to decide them as a judge.